All right, let's see what they talk about, man. Cat Williams. I'm going to leave a like. Shout out my dog, Unk. See what he talk about, man. Let's get into this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. It's going on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Yeah. Let's see what he talk about. Other side of Kirk Franklin prank. <laughs> <laughs> this is the record. If you don't know who Cat William is, he an OG comedian, legend. I don't want to say nothing else because if he see this ever, that boy is going to make fun of me. But he he been through some things in his lifetime. Let's see what he let's see what he going through right now. Let's see what he gotta talk about. Twenty twenty four. All my life, been grinding all my life. Damn, they going they gonna copyright me for that? Oh, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shake Shake. The guy that's stopping by for conversation and the drink today, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna love him. Some call him the greatest, the greatest one of the greatest comedians, dead or. Uh, hold on, wait. I gotta, I gotta change my, I gotta change my title to my live. How you doing, buddy? Live. One of America's greatest entertainers. One of the funniest men on the planet. World renowned, multi talented, a comedy legend. He's touring. To, he's the top touring comedian, selling out arenas. He's a hilarious storyteller. Emmy award winning actor, voice actor, rapper, writer, producer, director, icon, genius, a national tre treasure, philanthropist, humanitarian, social activist, a father. Oh my God, he's all of this. Oh my God, Cat Williams, you a goat. Fuck. Father, one of the great funny men of our generation and any generation, Mr. Cat Williams. Thank you, sir. I, that was, was that magnificent. I, you are, you are, you are magnificent at intros and you did not. <laughs> it's just like JJK mod, mod, Minecraft. Sheesh, I'm gonna have to play that. Skimp on mine. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Yeah. You know, anytime you come to Club Shay Shay, we have to toast. Yes. Bro, you've been doing it. I mean, you told you one of the top tour, you're the one of the top touring comedians of all time. You already got started before we started taping. Mm. I did. Appreciate that. Tell the people at home. I thought they was lying. And um <laughs> Yeah. This particular alcohol is stronger than you think it would be probably by about two and unbelievably smoother and milder by the same maybe 30 percent than you could possibly expect and unlike cognacs the world over this one doesn't taste like wood at the end and it doesn't taste like it's got artificial color what the fuck is he talking about right now <laughs> Bro, when you get older, you just start rambling about shit that don't... He's just rambling right now. <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? And it doesn't taste like it's got artificial flavors. Uh, it's, a, it's a fine product. He's a connoisseur. You can tell he's a, connoisseur. he's a cognac connoisseur. He understands the method that goes into making cognac. Right. Well, as a comedian, you get free drinks at the club. <laughs> so all comedians either turn out to be connoisseurs oh, like myself right. or straight up and down alcoholics <laughs> like 60% of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for stopping by the club. I understand Thank that you. you're very, very busy. And for you to take time out of your busy schedule and stop in today, we really, really appreciate it here at Club Shay Shay. Thank so thanks for so stopping much. by, Kat. And I needed you to know why I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. Okay. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, you have a great product here and as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guest. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. <laughs> you brought that on over to here, and that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. Oh, and shit. I have watched all of these 
lowbrow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it. Oh, you gonna set the record straight? Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. He about to go crazy. He's about to go crazy. Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in. <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was gonna be fr was gonna be the. Where the homies at? Uh, they only pull up when I'm watching. I mean, when I'm playing Brawlhalla, that's it. They're not loyal, man. There's only a few people that's loyal in here. Well, two people. You and gaming. <laughs> Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick points. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was gonna play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Uh, well, I didn't know he, he shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. Oh. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it at home? He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that all oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence. What stole it? Greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was... Sir, no one... Why no... He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he... What? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. And I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie. But I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. Oh. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. What? Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a... I'm not watching all of this right now. I'm going to watch like some of it and then I'm going to watch some of it tomorrow. Because this biz is almost three hours. Classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never no, funny, funny no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was gonna play Money Mike. 
No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines, I wrote them. I don't know. Ice Cube said that scene wasn't supposed to be... That our scene wasn't in the script. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious, not now, then. He was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, uh, what was Ricky? Wait, what? Contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. What the fuck? What's going on? Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Why would you put that in your put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. Oh my they God. They play good women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we... Oh my God, is he... He said Tyler Perry can't play a man. He can only play a woman. That's his best role. Released that clip and he said that you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So That he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the Comedy Store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Then you ask it, why you not a- Is he right right now? Or he just like, clarifying, what did y'all call this? Ratting, clarifying, truth telling, or just keeping it real? Which one is it? I don't know. I don't know. A movie star. I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know, I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore the way you, you, I mean, we ain't even got- I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. No, this nigga lying. This, this cup done. This nigga's drunk. Oh my God. The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his but, arms off his but, stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie can't, star. Can't. What? <laughs> It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. Album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Oh, my God. 
Why is he going in like this? Can I say that again for the audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't think Sam's a good, a, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir. I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You yes. wanted to set the record straight. Win winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give them a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened, it's untrue, and there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They, for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. Ah! He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like, all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous... Y'all don't think he was ever on drugs? I don't know. When he was getting beat up by that kid, he kind of looked like he was on drugs. Um, I don't know, Cat. You probably tell a lot of truth, but... I don't know. You did look kind of back then. You look like you was on a little bit of <laughs> back then. I ain't gonna cry. People go through some stuff, man. You know, it's not. You don't gotta be ashamed about it. The stories because it's co competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you're a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you? But I don't disagree. I don't no, dislike no, all the no. Cowboys. Cat damn, you like this? No, like, that's okay, not. Okay, what comedian do you did like? Did you play against the team? Yes. I've taken 46 comedians with me on the road. 46. Okay. 46 I'm comedians. You putting niggas on, man. That boy putting niggas on. You can't talk down about cat, man. Not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat Faison liar. There's nobody yeah, you, like you, me in the business. Faison just called a straight. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Oh my God. Why? He Zero. Why he doing that? Why? Why he doing that, yo? So Why is idea. he allowed to have conversations about real stand-up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a journalist. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't have, harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird. All right, Shaq. Weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, come on. Listen. In Wait, what he said? What he said? Weird face wife that never do an interview. Uh, light skin wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin. Weird face wife that never do an interview. Uh, in man, come on. Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her, and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. 
That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants. What is all what is what he said? Pause. 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 What he said? Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants. <laughs> what the fuck? Big dick deviants? Oh my god, cat. Is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TG Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I didn't have no more of these. Amen, amen. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of, <clears throat> I'm getting on here. All right. Damn! After that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! Man. Right. We good now? Because the people want to know well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah. Oh, because I was ask because you that. because in thirty years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing, you will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no... Cap. 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 I know, I know you did... Something, bro. I seen a video of you tweaking. Like, he was tweaking. Like, he was tweaking. He was looking bad. He looked twitchy. Like, nah, he had to be on something back then. He had to be. He had to be. Stories of doing nobody dirty. And they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying, that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike. Because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told him to go get the Prowler. I then told him to paint it purple. I told him don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play. Like, I... I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no one's ever heard. But I didn't know it was a lie. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard, oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Kat. <laughs> Normally, when people are giving you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time, and they're giving information no one else knows or have ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You oh told God. us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. The, uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made, 
all lies. Steven Cedric never performed at the Comedy Store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called also playing that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe he called it Kevin Hart a industry plant. Christina. What happened? Are you watching? I'm eating right now. So you ain't watch none of this? <laughs> yeah, I'm watching. Alright. Let me know when you're done. Alright. He called Kevin Hart an industry plant. What's up, VR? People don't understand the definitions of these words. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What powerful. do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that Can you explain me? I think that's enough to be honest. You think what's enough, Shaq? Can you explain me this? I just joined. Uh, VR, you're not going to get it because this is uh, U.S. comedians. I don't know if you know what comedian is. Comedian is like people that tell jokes, be funny and stuff in movies or whatever. And this guy is like one of the best, like one of the oldest, best or whatever. And he telling, he telling truth. He telling the truth, so-called the truth, allegedly what everybody was telling like he was basically saying a, a lot of people was telling lies about him and what they did in their career and shit like that trust me i am comedian <laughs> you i think you watched enough of this video i'm gonna keep watching Shaq. just pull up later on Shaq. i'm gonna be streaming later i'm gonna be playing Bahala and shit later if you don't want to watch this but i'm gonna keep watching I'm interested. But uh yeah. Basically he telling people he telling them who lied and and shit like that. That soul they soul in Hollywood is what? is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for twenty five years? If what I say ain't the case, it's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. They they rock with who they rock with, and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being. All right, Shaq. I'll be on the game later, probably like five six o'clock. In the competition, any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources, and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, <laughs> and see if that factors in, I, I guess. <laughs> what? Okay, hold on. Why you get up like that? Like you about to do something. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, <laughs> and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. <laughs> wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same.
That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers. How, I, Shannon Sharp could not talk once this whole time. He had Cat Williams making his this, his job easy right now. I, I interview Cat Williams. I say one thing. Cat Williams would talk for like thirty minutes. I fuck with it. I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at What the fuck? What? Takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. Oh my God. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get there. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they yep. don't want you to talk about. You done? Yeah. Why you took so long to answer? What do you mean? I was eating and put the shit away. All right. They tell you that themselves. Oh, I can't do that. They don't want not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. No, that as they, I believe that people, some like whatever companies and shit pay you to talk about certain things and they don't, they, they make like a list of shit you can't talk about. I believe that part. Everything else is kind of iffy to me. I don't know. They tell you that themselves. Oh, I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost. All right, gaming. Because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? <laughs> you called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you ever been? On, have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. Damn! Oh my God! So no. Faison's never done his own tour in thirty years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like, you can't get a young fan base with that. Like, you got to be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100-city tour. I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym, but you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay. Let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some... Uh -huh. I want to protect him real quick, because you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019, but did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000, so I just want to make... The no, Kings of I didn't, no, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said 
I couldn't do stand-up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know, you talking about, about Cedric. Joke stealer from Cedric. Yeah, it's oh, Cedric. Okay, so, so, okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. You okay. Oh, shit, let's see, let's see. He getting his facts mixed up. He getting his facts mixed up. No, 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 no. What comes out in 2000? The, the original kings of comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, yeah. Right. So if I yeah. said the dates oh, wrong, yeah. yeah. So yes. let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. I had Cedric on here, and I asked him about the joke stealing, and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your, to to that point, you say. Right, so he thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up, it takes about three minutes, but then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab and help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, mm -hmm. and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steven <laughs> Why he took so long? <laughs> that boy was flabbergasted. Into a spaceship. Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times, <laughs> and Cat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon. I would have, what the fuck? A bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> Pause. Pause. There was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just going to lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you... Christina. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Would you think you think he lying or what? I don't know. You ain't listen to none of, the, none of this. He said Kevin Hart an in industry plant. You believe you think that? Oh yeah, for sure. You think Kevin Hart is an industry plant? Yeah. You don't see any specials of his before he came out with Soul Plane. Exactly. Yeah, I do. Where? Show me. YouTube. Nah. You gotta check on YouTube. Uh, he don't got nothing on there. <laughs> yes, he do. Stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem, but... We don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Can you believe we're this deep into the score? Yeah. with Jehovah. What was Cat Williams' upbringing like? 
your parents were Jehovah Witness. You were a, a prodigy. You were brilliant. You talked to me that you got accepted to college at seven years of age. You can read fluently at three years of age. What? You hear what he said? <laughs> you talked to me that you got accepted oh, yeah. to college at seven years of age. You. He said he got accepted to college at seven years old. Cat Williams. Could read fluently at three years of age. So having that kind of knowledge, having that kind of what? Now I don't believe nothing he just said. I don't believe nothing he just said. Cat Williams got accepted into college at seven years old and can speak fluently. I mean, read fluently at three. Come on now. Uh, 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 of, of, of prodigy or so what was so I mean with it what was your upbringing how, how was it how was life as Cat Williams crunk coming up um I I <laughs> he looking like he know that's a lie I was often confused because I knew things and I wasn't sure how I knew them um I knew things that I f felt like I don't have a reason that I, I know this, but I, I loved to read. Um, I was voracious because they told me when I was young that knowledge was powerful, uh, that knowledge was power, and I, and I had studied powerful people, and I, I, um, I really believed that. I, I, I immediately, my next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world, right. only to get out in the world and find out you don't know anything, you know? So it, um, it, was, a, it was a confusing time, but yeah, I had a childhood. I was, I was grown, but I, I, at five years old- He said, I had a childhood, I was grown. What is this man saying? Oh, I was in front of five, ten thousand people giving a performance with a full suit and tie on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it hasn't. It had. It 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 came full circle um, for my life. I knew that the applause and um, the giving of information and laughs and truth to people somehow benefited them and also benefited you. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so when they would ask me what I wanted to be, everything that I would say that I wanted to be was something that didn't exist. And they would never give me credit for it because I needed to say um, a doctor or a lawyer. lawyer, but that's not what I wanted to be. So your parents, weren't as supportive as you would have hoped because you were wanting to be things when you got older that they had no knowledge of or it didn't exist at the time? No, it, it wasn't that. It, it was, um, I'm saying I'm, <clears throat> I'm almost 100 years old right now, but if we <laughs> go outside right now, I can run a 4340. Or, or a sub. I can do a 416 if I'm Oh, there's Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. <laughs> but, um... Oh, you've been on the submarine. That what you sub? So, um... <laughs> so back then, it was even greater. He ignored him. So them. you got this guy that all the coaches want to play. Man, Cap, don't do that. Hold on, because I'm... Wait, what he I'm said? I'm five foot five want to play Man. greater. So you got this guy that all the coaches want to play. Man, Cass, don't do that. Hold on, because I'm I'm five foot five in the fifth grade. I've been this size my whole <laughs> life. Like there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Like it, just, as soon as everybody caught their growth spurt, I was out of there. But <laughs> I, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see that. Like, 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 no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never bothered when they said, you know, cats on drugs. I knew, how you gonna prove that? I'm, 
<laughs> my body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same size since I was ten. <laughs> like, what do you? Yeah, like I, I, ha I haven't, ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand up or anything. But it was a, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you mentioned you were such a voracious reader. And a form of punishment was when they would they take the books for them because you could read fluently. You, you, you told me how at like three or four years old you could read, read, read. Not, not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. Wait, Cat Williams Haitian? No, he just did missionary work out there in Haiti. Mm. And, I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the the gardener. Like I, I'm saying, so I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm probably, How old are you I'm probably reading three thousand books a year from the time that I'm come on eight years old to the time that I'm twelve. Come, you can, Christina. You could, you can, you can read three thousand books in a year. I don't know if it's possible. It is possible. 3,000 books? Yeah. People finish books in like a day. Not cat in the hat books. <laughs> not, no, like, not, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Harry Potter books. Yeah, people can finish that in days. Somebody can finish. Stop. Let me. Bro, let me look. Bro, this up. if somebody can finish a video game in a day, people can. Sixty hours and twenty three minutes. Sixty hours. Okay. To read. Like three days. Four days. What? The word where it started with it contains approximately seven seventy six thousand words, two hundred and twenty three pages. Just Google most books written and uh, read in a year. The average reading time is around four hours and thirty two minutes. Based on the average reading speed of 300 words per minute. What'd you say? Look at what? Most books read in a year. The average American reads 12.6 books a year. Yeah. He talk about 3,000. <laughs> this is the average. 12 books? 12.6 books a year. Okay. That's going to be a lie. Can can a person read a hundred books a year? If you read ten hours a week, you'll read two twenty six thousand pages a year. Let's say the average you read is two fifty pages. In this scenario, you'll read one hundred and four books in a year. 
with that pace, even if you take two weeks break, you will read at least a hundred books in a year. And he talk about three thousand. If you take ten hours in a week, so he taking how many? No, 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 no. Eight years old, eight thousand just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm, probably, How do you I'm think? probably reading three thousand books a year from the time that I'm <laughs> eight. Like come on, like he's saying this with a and look at look at Shannon Sharp head when he say three thousand. Look at his, look at his jester. I'm saying so. I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm How probably, do you I'm think? probably reading three thousand books a year. From the time that I'm... <laughs> you see him? Did you see his head? He like... 3,000? I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year from the time that I'm 8 years old to the time that I'm 12. So, at 8 years old, he reading 3,000 books in a year? Come on, bro. No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. You could drive at 12, you received a full scholarship to the National but Science Academy. But wasn't he just saying he was like homeless? Bro. Let's, let's listen, let's listen. You could listen. drive fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. You could drive at 12, you received a full scholarship to the National Science Academy in Dayton, Ohio. But you failed, so you couldn't become, so you would become ineligible. How he get a scholarship and fail? Yeah. Like, come on, cat. If you gonna lie, make it like make it sound good. Why didn't you want to take that opportunity? I didn't see it as an opportunity. When I got in there, all the students were wearing lab coats and it, it seemed very confined and restricted and nobody seemed like they were having fun. It just seemed like everybody was smart. I, I didn't want that. That was that wasn't what I was signing up for at all. And plus, um, I thought that I was. I, Jesus was my big homie. So you know how you get a story about a dude joined the gang and you get a big homie, mm -hmm. right? Like at this particular point in my life, I'm. My thought is that the Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written. Okay that it houses the truth and that it gives you this story of Jesus and that I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. Wait, what? You, you, what you say? What? That I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. What do you mean by that? You, you, you at 13, you not only look like, okay, mom, I'm moving out. You moved from Ohio to Florida on your own. You weren't afraid. What? 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 Christina. Yeah. Are you listening? Oh, he's crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. How he move out at 13 years old from Ohio to Florida? With nobody. <laughs> yeah, no. Can you even get a job at 13? No. It's not here in Florida. So how how is he making money and how is he showing pay stubs to get a house? Or this is when he's he was he this is when he was homeless. Yeah. Or how did he travel from Ohio to Florida with no money? Yeah, what, what, was his, what was his transportation? How, how did he get there? Okay. All right. First, he read 3,000 books at eight. He traveled. Wait. Okay. Let's see. How do you spell Ohio? 16 hours and two minutes. 1,058 not 59 miles how's he getting here to here with no <laughs> all right bro all right you at 13 you not only look like okay mom i'm moving out you move from ohio to florida on your own you weren't afraid he know that's a lie look at him look at, he didn't 
didn't even say nothing. You moved from Ohio to Florida. <laughs> Look at this nigga. Look at his face. Look at his face. On your own. No, it's a fucking lie. You weren't afraid. Uh, I mean, you like, did you? He like, yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yo, you weren't afraid. I mean, you like, did you? No, hold did, on, hold did you on, not have? A, what, so what were you going? So what were you going to do when you got to Florida? Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing as a human being of not being afraid. Okay. There are certain human beings that understand that being afraid in no way stops you from doing what you got to do. Okay. So um, I, w I was afraid, um, but I couldn't be that afraid because I knew what had happened with Jesus. I knew how it worked out. I, I, I knew that I wasn't in the wrong with how I was feeling, and I knew that I, I didn't have any bad intentions in it. Right. So I trusted God that it would work out. Why Florida? Um, because I, if you're raised in Ohio, the one thing on your list is I'm going to get away from snow <laughs> and I'm going to get as far. I want to go. Tell me the place. I literally went to a truck stop and I asked all the truck drivers where they was going. And it was one guy going to California and it was one guy going to Florida. And they told me how long it was going to take. And so that's why I ended up in Miami. Because... How'd you get there? You caught a bus? Or no, you... I just told you. I was at the truck stop. I, so he you let hitchhike? Me. I got in. I didn't hitchhike. I got in the back of the dude's 18-wheeler. Me and... What? What? My Rottweiler puppy and my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, because I was... What? What? Ain't that... What? Ain't that illegal? Yeah, that's human trafficking. Back from my 16-minute nap. What's up, Shaq? I'm still not on the game, so... Yeah, I'm still watching this. So you could pull up back later if you don't want to watch this with me. But that's illegal. Well, he talking about he grabbed his suitcase and got in the back of an 18-wheeler. Yo, Whips, you know what an 18-wheeler is? That's that big-ass truck. And he talk, he talking about he brought his puppy... And his suitcase. I probably had twenty five hundred dollars on me, like I, like I was shoveling snow and cutting grass. Like I always had pockets full of money. When did you make the decision that you were gonna leave Ohio and go somewhere? And it ended up being Florida. So, but when did you know that you were leaving Dayton, Ohio, going to Florida? And my father and I's last interaction. Um, Somebody could have not made it. And we both understood that was all bad. What was the disagreement about? Um, if, if you t say that my family is very religious, let just say I'm not. So anything that I, I'm going to do is not is going to fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not going to let you tell me what I'm going to be, even Especially if what you're saying is wrong. I can't condone wrong. And if I find out that something is wrong and I tell you it's wrong and you don't back me, that's so, what it is. Even as a young child, you were willing to tell your parents that some of the things that you're saying doesn't coincide with what I've been reading in, in, in the Bible. No, no, very simply, don't don't try to disfellowship me for sexual acts and I'm a virgin. Sorry, God, don't make mistakes. You don't get two times to fuck me over. What do you mean you went to God and he told you I was guilty? <laughs> you just lied on God. So long. That's it. There's no conversation. Deuces. What? That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the altercation, I love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That, it'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me. And I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? No, um, I don't. I don't know. He's a great man. I'm. I'm saying. Because uh, seems like y'all butt head, y'all butted heads. Right. But pause. Pause. Generally have.
happens with a father-son <laughs> dynamic. It was just that um, religious relationships are always difficult right. in families. And they always are. Before it got to the point, because the dynamic, he's father, you're son. Before that dynamic and you step up on his level and you challenge him, you felt it was best for you to leave. No, no, no. I'm not being challenged. I'm being beat to death. Oh, he was abusive. I didn't say that. I said we were in an altercation. Oh, uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there, cat. Yeah. I saw what you did. You was in an altercation. You didn't say you lost. You said you was in an altercation. I in no way gave you the impression that I won anything. I'm the one leaving. I'm out of bounds. This his house. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so you, as long as I'm going to be under his roof, you there are certain quality. things that I'm going to have to do. Right. And the only way that's going to change is either this or that. Right. And I, I, I'm i saying I had two younger brothers. Like, I'm not, I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I don't have any mental issues whatsoever, despite what they lead people to believe. You know, I make good, pretty good decisions. Were you not... Uh so how was their relationship with your father? Were you not afraid to leave them? Well, I asked because it it went all the way to the actual department. His faces are so crazy. It was actually going to be something. Um, and when I asked them if they could just make sure that my brothers didn't get separated and what so have you, um, they said they couldn't make those type of guarantees, that they weren't really sure what would happen if this went down. And so part of leaving was the hope that it would be okay for them because not, none of them experienced what I experienced. I'm saying I'm the oldest, it's a lot riding on me. Right. I'm supposed to at least religiously hold down the family's name Correct. at this household, right. you know what I mean? How much older are you than the baby and the knee baby? Like a lot older. Like, I, if I'm. I 12, think, I 13. Think, yeah, they're five. And, and. All right. All right, that's enough for right now. I'm gonna watch 40 more minutes tomorrow. Christina! Yo. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, just let me know what time. We'll, I'm gonna be busy around like four o'clock after that. All right. Uh, bye bye. Wait, you gotta tell you, you gotta tell how you feeling about this so far, this video so far. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, some of it is believable, but when he talks about himself, he sounds like he's lying. So I don't know how to how I stand on that because I mean what he says about Hollywood is all around Hollywood, like with the black actors and the white actors too. But when he talking about himself, it sounds like a lie. Yeah, exactly. So what can you believe? I don't know. I think this nigga lies. <laughs> Cause like you can't you can't say something that sounds good about other people and then when you talk about yourself, it you didn't even try he didn't even try to make it sound good. Yeah, that's true. You're eight years old reading three thousand books, you got accepted to college at seven. You got a scholarship but you failed. What? Yeah. Somebody said he's a pimp. Hi, right, Christina. Okay, we'll talk tomorrow.